on the stage Dr. Asifa Wali who has got her PhD from the division of uh, FRM and ma'am has got extensive research experience in the field of recruitment potential of rainbow trout, gonadal histology. Also ma'am has studied digestive enzymes in different life stages of rainbow trout and ma'am has always been a guiding light for the fellow students. Now I may request ma'am to share her talk on physiology and digestion of rainbow trout. Please ma'am I welcome you. Thank you Sabri for such kind introduction. Uh, I'm Dr. Asifa Bali. I'm basically the alumni of this college and right now I'm working as a project associate in HAD projects under Dean Faculty of Fisheries. Today I'm here to speak on uh, biology of feeding, maturation and spawning in trout. Okay, let me just uh, start with the introduction. See, uh, we have teleost which uh, basically forms an important food source nowadays because population is rising and uh, it's supplying a rich source of protein and uh, we know that fish is you know adapted to uh, aquatic habitat uh, it has its uh, home in water and it shows the diversity in feeding habits like uh, all the fishes cannot have same feeding habits some fishes are omnivore herbivore or carnivore and depending upon that feeding habit they have variations with respect to their elementary canal so there are uh, you you may uh, you know uh, you go, you are going to see uh, how this uh, structure morphology and at cellular level, you know, this elementary canal is varying, uh, although in the same species within the stages as well. And uh, there is a basically a diversity in morphological and functional characteristic that is shown in the track and which has a direct correlation with its habits, taxonomy, size, shape, like the elementary canal of uh, a small fish cannot be, you know, uh, same with regard to the adult fish. It has some variation in it and uh, which is directly uh, having a correlation with its growth because unless and until fish feeds well, it cannot show the uh, growth rate as well. So uh, for understanding this related mechanism like the histophysiological and nutrition functions, uh, that uh, digestive structure is very much important and its identification, uh, you know, it's very essential. We are going to, uh, you know, start the cultural program or entrepreneurship in fishes. We have to, you know, it's like uh, we are extracting the fish from its wild home and putting it in uh, the captivity. So we have to maintain the conditions as per its na natural habitat. So coming to the next slide, as per the uh, you know, Dean Faculty of Fisheries said, we have done a lot of uh, work regarding its uh, recruitment potential, like the capacity it has to you know breed or producing the eggs, the or diameter studies, or other reproductive biological parameters, including the digestive physiology and the parameters, which are very much important uh, with you know this survival of the fish. But definitely there are some bottlenecks and there are some constraints which are you know affecting its survival at the larval stage. Why? Because because uh, we we. We are lacking somehow to understand how fish is going to absorb its food uh, because uh, there is greater uh, core, you know, relationship with respect to the enzymes or with respect to the cellular structures that I am going to show uh, from my research part actually. Yes, uh, we know the cold water fishes, they have an adaptive range of temperatures like 10 to 12 degrees Celsius. So, in this 7 days ki program, you have heard a lot of people who have heard cold water fish. Hai. Uh, wala temperature hai. definitely it's exotic but it it has commendably uh, you know matched our parameters of water body and uh, that's why we have successfully jo hai, rainbow trout mein, number one have seed producing mein, Himachal, Jammu and Kashmir so coming to the varieties like uh, three varieties on Corinthus Michaels, Solomon Tuta Ferio and Brook Trout is there and uh, coming back to the elementary canal strate strategies, like the strategy is same as per the higher vertebrates, okay? And uh, it has a relationship with its ancestors or phylogenies or diet composition and especially with, re with regard to the parameter, with regard to the parameters of environment. Like the food, amount of food present in the water body is definitely going to affect the fish uh, with regard to the development of elementary canal. See, if I mention here, carnivore fish is having uh, relatively large stomach and short intestine. It is definitely having the relationship with regard to its uh, juices, digestive juices or the physiology or the habitat which the fish prefers. Like uh, herbivore fish, they have the longer intestine. Why? Because there are not so much of proteinaceous enzyme in the fish. So it requires a lot of area to consume its food and to absorb and to show the mechanics and the dynamics of 
digestion. So age is also there and developmental stages as I said there are different strategies with respect to the uh, you know uh, this uh, life cycle stages as well and definitely enzyme activity is significantly you know correlated with them to um, you know to answer this question like age parameters environment digestive enzyme activity they are at most important to formulate the feed I'm coming to the point like the uh, we, uh, we are assuming that we will culture the fish in the raceway okay but we have to understand that we are keeping the fish in water body we are giving the feed but we have to understand the feed formulation as per its digestive physiology as per the functioning of the digestive tract like uh, fish me kon sa la enzyme ki stage pe jata hai uske hisab se manipulate karna hai feed ko so it's one of the core stone like digestive enzyme plays an important role since the overall ef efficiency of digestion it hinges on their functional characteristics and the types definitely so this digestive tract physiology the enzymes they are largely basically responsible for the degradation of nutrients like uh, enzymes are very much important uh, like fish is consuming food okay we are giving the proper concentration we are giving proper protein proper amount of carbs proper amount of lipids we are giving all the things all the vitamin mineral mix as well but the thing is if the enzyme is you know present in sufficient amount of quantity and if the digestive tract is like healthy gut kind of the coat healthy gut in the fish so it can definitely lead to the proper degradation of nutrients which will lead to the absorption of nutrients and that in turn will benefit us in terms of the growth rate of fish that because at the end we require the fish at the table of customer because we are selling that fish and we require uh, that amount of you know price the revenue from our culture and we we are ensuring that the consumer will get benefited by uh, getting a suitable weight of weight or length of fish so uh, we have to take care with regard to this uh, you know uh, physiology of fishes also this intestinal morphology like the shape structure at the cellular level it's very much it's like a tool it's like a tool for understanding the mechanism of digestion absorption of food and it has been you know done for a variety of fishes it's not like that um, we are talking uh, about digestive physiology many of the work has been done on the digestive physiology as well coming to the uh, histological uh, knowledge of the elementary canal definitely it uh, it forms a base for the elementary canal and it would be an, uh, you know we can say it it can it have a potential for establishing a feeding regime of trout like if we uh, are uh, well aware about the amount of the enzymes the type of the enzymes the, the fish has at different life cycle stages we can go accordingly the feed formulation and we it's like uh, we are then able to understand what fish needs because fish is mute that a fish is not able to uh, you know uh, say us that i require this protein at this stage and i require this um, uh, you know uh, carbs mm -hmm. at this stage and coming uh, to the point that how fish requires uh, you know uh, diverse uh, proteins or carbohydrates at different life cycle stages so see this uh, gut morphometric parameters are basically these are the tools or the indices from which we can extract the suitable data and we can modify uh, our feed or we can understand the physiology of digestion like the relative length of gut is basically the ratio of the gut length or the total length i'm mentioning these parameters just to um, you know uh, provide you a know how if you are going to culture your fish uh, especially for the farmers especially for uh, those candidates who are from non fishery background Uh, they should get a know how about the dimensions of the fish about the gut length gut weight gut uh, ratio intestinal coefficient amount of the tissues that is present in the fish uh, for the digestion and the physiology as well like this is basically the extraction of my data it's showing the gross trout uh, anatomy uh, in different uh, developmental uh, stages like it's mentioned here fry fingerling yearling and table size see the length um, uh, of the rainbow trout as a whole intestinal length intestinal coefficient and hepatosomatic index i have given it is varying as per the different uh, stages are concerned like if if you see the length is on increasing the whole intestinal length is also increasing intestinal coefficient if if you see it's very much yearling and table size coefficient is basically the amount of the tissue dedicated towards the digestion so now we are aware that different stages have different amount of these 
parameters varying so we can accordingly at least have the know how uh, which stage is basically going to perform according to the feed formulation now these are the in ingredients maybe um, many uh, scientists have given you already this uh, we require the fish meal the soya bean meal or blood meal and we require the vitamin or mineral mix for the, uh, for their feed formulation definitely for consuming these nutrients what at most important is at most important is to understand digestive physiology how uh, the digestive tract is going to consume all this okay we are giving uh, the food to the fish but it is important to keep uh, in mind that how fish is going to uh, consume this see uh, water quality parameters you all have go, uh, gone uh, through that uh, subject uh, do ph temperature uh, total ammonia or the hardness or alkalinity and the other salinity parameters we know all these parameters we uh, <coughs> when we decide to culture a fish we keep in mind that uh, we are going to study this parameter accordingly we maintain the parameters like do 9 to 12 bpm like that and we we will able to you know we will survive our fish in water but we are giving feed as well but then we we are coming to at last at the point that how digestive tract is going to work or how digestive uh, tract is going to uh, take this food and degradation of food is at most important because uh, at most care is needed for the functioning of digestive tract in fishes see uh, i was talking about digestive enzymes this whole procedure is actually uh, as a farmer or as an entrepreneur you many people are not able to you know uh, estimate the enzyme values or um, you know <clears throat> going to the labs so um, at the time of culture or during the culture period to make the feed better or make the feed formulation better and better and to uh, seriously uh, keep an eye on the working of digestion uh, farmers can do like they can go approach to the labs for digestive enzyme assays to estimate the values accordingly that too for the different life cycle stages so that they can know which enzyme is having higher value in which stage and accordingly then combining the feed ingredients as well so it was basically my research extraction uh, uh, slide uh, what we did we basically homogenized that gut extract then we uh, uh, centrifuged it at maximum rpa and then uh, that extract or superintendent was collected in small alicots and then it was subjected to the assays with the uh, kits available in the lab so this is um, some photographs uh, from the work you can just get the know how how it is done but uh, coming to the main figure see uh, if you clearly uh, observe their fry stage then table side stage they have the higher amount of lipase enzyme in their gut so what we can uh, do we can just formulate the feed according to the life cycle stages like fish uh, in fry stage they require more protein and lipids so accordingly manipulating the feed at least so not changing the composition but manipulating the feed giving the lipid or the proteinaceous food more to the fry because fish is in early stage and the gut is developing uh, reproductive or um, digestive organs are developing still in the baby fish so giving the good amount and right amount of food as per the digestive physiology of fish is at most important that can lead to the uh, growth rate more growth rate in fish and faster growth rate if you as uh, uh, check here in broods like brood fish is basically having the mpd elementary canal you can say to occupy the gonads hai na gonads ko space and volume mil jaye uske liye fish jo hai stock condition pe jaati hai but if you have uh, um, you know see there is mia uh, some amount of lp phosphatases and some amount of uh, mia activities recorded in brood fish so what we can do we can formulate the feed as per the brood fish demand like mla's activity is there we can at least add some carbohydrate source so that fish at least during its reproductive phase at least survive well not um, you know jo sir bol rahe the we discussion mein ki fish mein disease ho raha hai and we are not able at least we we, uh, we should have a technical person with with us uh, who can told us what is uh, going on with the fish so it's like that as per the stages uh, go you know checking the enzyme values or checking the state of the digestive tract at the, the cellular level or digestive enzyme extraction level we can you know definitely ascertain uh, the feed formulation according to the fish so this is basically the <clears throat> extraction of elementary canal from the baby fish 
wherein it shows the pyloric CK development. So till pyloric CK is basically a retentive organ or absorptive organ, necessary organ in trouts for the absorption of the feed. Then uh, first part of intestine is proximal and then distal. You can, uh, this is also the fingerling picture. See the variation uh, which is uh, visible to the eyes. Total variation, increase in length, increase in weight, increase in size. Right. So just coming to this photograph, I have not given uh, all the photographs of different stages because you, know, you may feel it very uh, kind of extended lecture. It's not like that. I have just uh, given two slides, like the uh, yearling wala slide and table size wala slide, just to make you understand how this digestive physiology is related with the feed, uh, feed or food taken by the fish. See the variations. Here the branching is the uh, cellular photo or the digestive tract photo or histomorphological snap of yearling stage of fish. It shows clearly the development of goblet cells, the enteriocytes and the layers like the stratum granulosum and other some scientific terms are there but the motive is to show you the development of digestive tract in different stages. So, uh, so as to give you a know how, how it, uh, it is going to work inside the fish. It's not like that um, fish ko paani mein dal gaya, feed de gaya and like that. We have to monitor the fish and we have to understand the related mechanism as well. Coming to this, this is the table size, uh, you know, stage. See the variations. There is extended branching at cellular level in case of table size fish. And we have seen, we have seen already the you know, previous slide that's showing the higher uh, lipase enzyme activity. See the branching and the amount of endocyte cells is increasing in higher stages. So it's definitely correlated with the amount of the cell development and the amount of the branching and the enzyme activity. Definitely all is correlated with the fish. So we are able to adjust the feed composition or ma manipulate at least the feed according to the life cycle stages. Now coming to the maturation and spawning wala topic. See, um, we know there is some morphological variations with respect to the male and female. Definitely it's uh, hooked males, like they have the hook-like jaw and it's absent in females. Their genitive pap papilla is ripening in females. They have the brighter coloration. It's like the tidbits, how we can, uh, you know, uh, understand which fish is uh, enter into the reproductive season or which fish is a candidate for uh, brew, uh, breeding season or which fish is a candidate or the brew. So uh, they have a fecundity about in a range of 1500 to 2000 eggs per kg body weight and their spawning season, you uh, people may have, you know, are already aware about the spawning season like October to Jan in case of Oncorhynchus mangus. And uh, now coming to this is a photograph of my uh, research period. So female, I, I have already worked actually on the recruitment potential of female rainbow trout. It's like that. Uh, now, uh, see, uh, in this slide also, I have also given only uh, three uh, stage uh, photographs or histological snaps here. Uh, what my motive is, there is definitely a, you know, a, a different picture inside the fish at cellular level. See the immature stage, it's not, oocytes are not developed, like the oo or the egg. It's not developed inside the immature ovary of uh, this oncorhynchus mycus. Then coming to the second stage, it somehow started developed. Then at the early maturing phase, it, there is no accumulation of yolk and what it is um, uh, like showing, the phase, reproductive whole phase re also requires a care um, while giving the feed to the fish or while formulating the feed to the fish. Digestion, maturation and spawning. These uh, broad terms are correlated with each other and if we as entrepreneurs or fish culture experts, if we are able to understand these three terms are correlated, then we will be successfully dealing with the rich rainbow trout culture in terms of production. See this uh, was earlier the rainbow trout life cycle, you people are already know about it. Now the trout hatchery, there are some units we can uh, Mention here brood stock or egg uh, and milk collection, incubation and larva rearing units. Uh, these photographs here are our research extraction photographs. You can, this is the brood uh, pond actually in Coconut Trout Fish Farm. Uh, for the broods actually, my uh, motive is to make you understand that these parameters in terms of digestion, in terms of maturation and spawning, 
water quality parameters and the digestive uh, this uh, indices or the gut morphometric parameters they, they have a strong correlation with each other see here uh, dissolved oxygen 9 ppm temperature 15 to 20 degrees celsius ammonia should be uh, about less than or equivalent to 0.05 mg per liter and uh, also the alkalinity and transparency should be uh, it's like 1.5 to 1.8 meter but the thing is maintaining these parameters in brood, uh, brood pond then uh, manipulating the feed according to the digestive tract physiology or uh, understanding the related mechanics of histology I am giving you the insight actually here I am not here to you know uh, giving you the formula how you can uh, uh, make the feed and giving to the fish I am just giving you the insight that the digestive tract of fish um, it has variations with its gut in terms of different life cycle stages with its gonads in terms of uh, different phases of uh, the gonad of the fish so it's like that definitely we are maintaining the parameters in the fish and we are keeping a good sex ratio and we are ensuring a healthy brood but the thing is the amount of the feed given to the fish and the maintenance of the fish uh, solely uh, gives you the results now this is the egg taking and milk collection we definitely go for the dry method because uh, there is least chance of contamination and uh, also uh, the sperm gets inactivated by adding the water De definitely we, after fertilization we are getting green eggs right and we have some unfertilized eggs that are whitish see uh, this photograph is also from the period while i was working the employees working in the hatchery you have to take uh, the utmost care if you are start starting your units or uh, suppose you people are going to start the hatchery as well Okay, combining a group of people, they are starting the hatchery. They have successfully uh, introduced the broods and allowing them to breed. Then they um, fish successfully, uh, you know, breeds and releasing the eggs. Then we have to take utmost um, utmost care during this, uh, you know, egg incubation period. We have to take out these whitish eggs because uh, they are of no use. Only ripened eggs, uh, you know, should be uh, given utmost care. Definitely water temperature about 10 to 14 degrees Celsius and we have different kinds of like uh, flat rough trays, vertical flow incubators, jar incubators as well. Developmental stages are there. See, I was talking about the uh, life cycle stages of the uh, rainbow trout like the fry, fingerling, yearling, adult and broods. And I was giving the insight uh, towards the you know, digestion and digestive physiology. Definitely the same is the case with the you know brooders they uh, go for the you know fertilization breeding and fertilization then we have the green and our eye over then we have the sac fry which has the yolk sac attached we have swimmer fry and the whole incubation period up to 90 days see um, if we see this uh, fry or the uh, sac fry it is basically this kind of small baby fish and we we are now understanding how it is going to survive in water because the digestive tract is yet to be de developed to develop the whole digestive tract like uh, um, and uh, requiring the amount of the feed or the nutrients is at most important after this stage we are somehow maintaining all the parameters but after this stage getting the getting the good result of growth in terms of weight and length is at most important larva rearing is the advanced stage like we are producing the fingerling trout fingerling or the fries and definitely uh, we reach the growth up to 8 to 12 centimeter within 6 months or 9 months but all this is possible actually all this is possible how we uh, how we are going to um, you know manage the hatchery or manage the ra raceway according to the know how or according to our understandings of digestion See, uh, digestion is um, why it is very much important because all the food we are giving to the fish, all the feed we are giving to the fish, already we know this feed is very much of high price in trout or in culture. 60% of the cost is in it. We are managing all the mi mixtures, rice, bran, fish, meat, blood meal, uh, all that meals, combining all that meals, giving vit vit vitamin and mineral mix. We are giving at most eff efforts to making the feed. But then we are unable to see the growth re results despite giving a good feed. Why? Because, because we lack somehow to understand the baby fish have 
कौन सा वाला मैनिपुलेशन फील्ड इसको जाना चाहिए और कौन सा वाला फील्ड अडल्ट स्टेज या इयरलिंग स्टेज को जाना चाहिए इफ वी आर एबल टू क्रैक दिस इक्वेशन देन डेफिनेटली वी वी विल गेट अ गुड रिजल्ट सी इट्स आई एम गिविंग यू द एग्जांपल ऑफ ह्यूमन बेबी ह्यूमन बेबी इज नॉट एबल टू यू नो कंज्यूम राइस एज इन इट पहले क्या देते हैं बेबी को मिल्क मदर्स मिल्क लाइक देन बेबी व्हेन इट स्टार्ट्स ग्रोइंग देन इट स्टार्ट्स फीडिंग ऑन अदर यू नो फूड प्रोडक्ट्स so definitely same is a case with fish i am just talking about giving the suitable or suitable feed to the fish according to the life cycle stages and that life cycle stages when the fish reaches the brood stage it then have the phases in its gonad structure that gonad structure is at most important to ensure the maximum number of fecundity maximum number of ova and those ova those eggs are basically converted into the, it into the baby fish then baby fish again grows into the adult one it's like that so definitely a clarification on aspect of nutritive physiology it it will basically help to solve the nutritional problems because all uh, the terminologies are related uh, keeping the fish in water body maintaining the water quality parameters that is separate field like the limnological uh, field then uh, phys physiology or fish biology is another field then the amount of the flow water flow into the raceway permanent how much water is going into the raceway that is another field then handling and care of the fish that is another field all fields are correlated with each other so assessing the development of digestive system in the rainbow trout at histomorphological level basically it provides the understanding definitely dietary requirements at different life cycle stages and examination of elementary canal like as an entrepreneur i would uh, suggest to the entrepreneurs that okay if they are running their farm from many years or if they are uh, um, you know uh, having a vision that they'll start their farm uh, they'll start their farm or raise way uh, they should grow you know they should keep in mind that we will go for at least uh, one time test or in in a year going for uh, one lab testing with regard to the digestion kaisa digestion chal raha hai fish mein few samples should be taken to the lab a per concerned person is there in case of disease same in case of disease like when fish is feeling you know fish is ill with affected with some bacteria or fungal disease what we are doing we are calling the expert we are mm, taking the fish to the lab to the pathologist same should be uh, you know done with the fishes in the brood pool or in the uh, adult pool or in yearling pool we should uh, go for few sample extraction and taking to the lab and just checking that whether fish is having the good amount of enzyme in it what is going on at the cellular level a person can uh, help you in getting the tests especially for you sir uh, those persons will if you are uh, you know uh, having in a mind that you will go for the culture you should definitely make a map or guideline how you can you know proceed your fish culture with regard to the technical persons many persons can help you in this regard so then uh, further this experimental knowledge is actually useful for making the baseline of i was talking about healthy trout gut which helps to understand the changes in digestive systems in different life cycle stages leading to the development of an informed aquaculture program and the management of trout stocks so that's all from my side thank you